as our headlines. After the snacks and numerous adjournments, the present trial of former Information Minister Ahmad Skatrat Jane and three others rumbles on. The thousand odd Gambian pilgrims look forward to their homecoming after a hit free spiritual journey to Islam's holiest site. Italy's scandal prone Prime Minister faces the ultimate battle in his political life. This as the cascading Eurozone debt crisis threatens to engulf his country. And Los Angeles courts find Michael Jackson's personal physician Conrad Murray guilty of involuntary manslaughter. This and other stories coming ahead in the next half hour. I am Abu Bakr Dabo. His Excellency the President, Sheikh Professor Al Haji Dr. Yahya Jame, has received eight greetings from the Minister of Youth and Sports, Sheriff Emil Gomez. The text of the message reads Your Excellency, as we celebrate the feast of Eid al Adha, I would like to convey on behalf of my family, staff, and indeed on my own behalf, sincere best wishes to Your Excellency and family. May Allah the Almighty, in His infinite mercy, reward your magnanimity, benevolence, and guidance to those of us who work directly under your leadership and indeed the Gambian people. May Allah, Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim, accept your prayers, guard, guide, and protect your Excellency. Your Excellency, we learned with deep sorrow and regret of the demise of Madame Rimo El Hassadi Suma, mother of your dear First Lady. Allow me, therefore, to use this opportunity on behalf of my family, ministry, and indeed on my own behalf to convey to Her Excellency through the First Lady, through you, our sincere condolences. May Allah, in His infinite mercy, grant the departed soul, Jannatul Firdaus. Amen. It concludes. And still on messages addressed to the Head of State, the Chairman of the Board of Directors, Barrett Hills Energy Public Company Limited, Roger Haynes, write, Your Excellency, I would like to take this opportunity to extend to you and your family, and indeed to the all the Gambian people, my warmest greetings on the celebration of the Feast of Tobaski. It is with enthusiasm that Barrett Hills continues to work closely with African Petroleum, the operator of license block Alhamdulillah A1 and A4. I look forward to meeting with you again. It ends. Over 1,000 men and women from the Gambia have fulfilled Islam's fifth pillar, the Hajj. Al Hajj Mohd Juf is in Mecca, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, and reports this year's spiritual journey is being described as the best in terms of logistical arrangements authorities have put in place. The Hajj in Mecca is all over after the pilgrims fulfilled the Mount Arafat convergence last Saturday. On the home front, the Gambians have this year witnessed an unprecedented Hajj rituals in terms of success stories, which many have described as historical in the annals of heart operations of the Gambia. Besides the physical fatigue of the pilgrims, all the plans have been executed accordingly. The logistics in terms of transportation were timely, and no Gambian was left out in any process. The movements at Jamarat were hitch free and smooth in nature. Essential drugs were adequate to take care of any ailments or medical complaints for that matter. At the time of filing this report, Gambian pilgrims have returned from Minna and are now settling in their residences in Mecca. Both the Minister of Works and Construction and the Gambia's Ambassador to the Holy Land, Dr. Ndugu Ba and His Excellency Omar Gibril Salah respectively, have been on the ground throughout to monitor the entire Hajj activities and have extra satisfaction on behalf of the Gambia government in the manner the operations were executed by the national carrier Gambia International Airlines GIA and the Hajj Commission. On behalf of President Jame, Dr. Njuguba and Ambassador Salah have praised and congratulated the Gambian pilgrims for coming out so successful in this year's Hajj. The arrangements by GIA, the national carrier, were highly commended by the two officials, and the efforts of the hard guys and other officials were equally appreciated by the authorities here. So far, everything is set and preparations are well on course for the timely return of the 1,035 Gambian pilgrims within the next few days. On the line from Makatil Mukarama, Al Haji Modi Juf reporting.
The Forum for African Women Educationalists, the Gambia Fawegam, recently held a jobs fair to guide female students to choose the right career path. The program, sponsored by Women for Action through the U.S. Embassy, saw numerous firms set up stalls to woo potential employees. We have more in this report. Playing their prospects and students taking time to see for themselves what offer best suits their ambition. It is Fawegam's Career Day Fair, a display staged by the Forum for African Women Educationalists, to guide young female students make informed choices about their life career. The aim is to support the women and girls empowerment drive by providing them the opportunity to climb the success ladder through education and life changing opportunities. And education is one way to move up the mobility ladder. Education is one way to change that life or that situation that looks like it's doomed or seems to be like it's no way out. Therefore, we must encourage, we must support our girls and women, not just only to go to school, not just only to be the average person, but to excel. Now, at Fawegam, we want to stop this cycle by encouraging women and girls to study technology, science, and maths classes, and to complete high school, college, and university. This is what will save the women and girls from a life of servitude. The Foregam coordinator dealt on the topic women and career choices, a discourse that harped on societal type casting, which has for decades limited women's potential to man key portfolios of influence. This stereotyping, however, must not be seen as a limitation. The US Ambassador Pamela White explained, as the Gambia is among few countries in the world that did more than enough for its girls and women. So if here you have a country that is putting money where their words are, you've got the political will, you've now got quality schools coming up all over the Gambia. And so whose fault is it if girls are not being educated today in the Gambia? I gotta tell you, it's your fault. Ambassador White made it crystal clear that girls will have to take responsibility for not making it in education, since education comes with its price, and that price then must be ready to offer. The chairperson of Fawegam board, Khadija Tujalo, described this fair as one that will help nurture students' trait and attitude towards making informed decisions before leaving school. It is envisaged that this career fair will enable students to understand how a variety of personal attributes, that is interests, values, preferences, motivations, aptitudes, and skills can have an impact on their potential success and satisfaction with different career options being exposed here today. A critical assessment of some of all these attributes will help students make more informed career decisions before leaving school. Similar statements we are re-echoed by the Deputy Permanent Secretary, Minister of Basic and Secondary Education, who commended Fire Gam for the initiative, adding that his ministry will do everything within its reach to promote the career choice initiative. Chanting on some of the students at the fair reveals that even though some of them are novice when it comes to career choice, this program they believe will help inform and augment their career prospects in life. It's interesting. It's, yeah, it's interesting because we've learned a lot and we hope to um, take some of the information to the school and tell them how we do it. Thank you. For me, this is the first time for me to attend this kind of programs. But uh, the program seems like a very important program. I'm here today. I think it's a very good program because it has given me more hope and more determination that I can make it in life. A thrilling drama on the benefits of educating the girl child was also staged by students from St. Teresa's Junior Secondary School to spice up the occasion. Abu Bakr Dabo, GRTS. The Independent Electoral Commission informs the general public that the election to the office of the President of the Republic of the Gambia shall take place on Thursday, 24th November 2011. A media release from the IAC states that the nomination of candidates for the said election will take place on Thursday, 10th November between the hours of 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. at the office of the Independent Electoral Commission along the Berthel Hardin Highway. These prospective candidates are to go through the process at the following times. UDP 10 a.m., NRP 11 a.m., GPDP 12 p.m., APRC 1 p.m., 
and GMC 3 p.m. The media dispatch reveals that only 300 party supporters will be allowed into the IC premises with their candidates, but adds that only 10 supporters will be allowed to accompany their candidates into the conference hall where the nomination will take place. All political parties are required to abide by and respect the time allocated to avoid unnecessary delay. The campaign for the presidential